start begging. Past you. ready. It's an hour and a half after we're supposed to start. Oh, don't worry. Heisey, we're live already. Yeah? Yeah. Remember Thank you. Well, yeah, we've been, we've been, we've been, uh, not for an hour. Just, uh, <laughs> Is this on? <laughs> Hello? Is that on? Okay, it's on. Tonight is called Happy is the Nation that Knows the Sound of the Chauffeur. In case anyone doesn't know, it was just two days of Rosh Hashanah when we blow the chauffeur. It's the big commandment from Hashem which we use to coronate him as our king. This story goes that the elderly Rabbi Chaim Abraham, who was the son of the Alter Rebbe, went to hear the chauffeur from the Alter Rebbe's grandson, the Tzemek Tzemek, even though the walk was difficult for him. Somebody asked him, why not just make your own minion at home and hear the chauffeur at home? Why do you have to step to the Tzemek Tzemek? Rabbi Chaim Abraham said, it's written, Fortunate is the nation that knows the sound of the chauffeur. It's in the, the Psalms of King David. And it doesn't say fortunate is the nation that hears the sound of the chauffeur. It says fortunate is the nation that knows the sound of the chauffeur. Our Rebbe points out that every incident involving a tzaddik is precise and filled with meaning. Even a seemingly lighthearted quip is based on either the real revealed or hidden Torah. So Rabbi Chaim Abraham said, <clears throat> fortunate is the nation that knows the sound. It doesn't say to hear the sound, to know the sound. He was quoting a Torah from the Zohar, from the inner level of Torah explanation. The Zohar says that on Rosh Hashanah, the people come to gaze at a person who includes all dimensions of Shalom. That's why this holy guy, Rabbi Chaim Abraham, had to go to the Tzemek Tzedek, because the Tzemek Tzedek included all dimensions of Shalom. What are these dimensions? They come to perceive the ways of the holy king. This is from the Zohar. And to know the precious beauty of the king with the intention of the heart, 
with chachma, which is wisdom, and with the complete and perfect desire. The verse says to know the sound. And to know in Hebrew is the word das, which means the bond. Because the one blowing the shofar becomes completely bound to the king. Our rabbi points out that the first comes, we wonder why Reb Chaim Avram went to the Tzemek Tzedek to know the sound of the shofar. After all, Rabbi Chaim Avraham was the son of the Alter Rebbe. And no doubt, his father, the Alter Rebbe, taught him the Shofar's meaning in a very deep and thorough way. So why did he have to go to the Tzemek Tzedek to know the sound of the Shofar? However, Zohar clarifies why he needed to hear the Shofar from the Tzemek Tzedek. In fact, the Rebbe says that the Zohar's explanation makes the story much tastier. And by the way, the Tzemek Tzedek was the Chabad Rebbe who uh, symbolized and indicated the level of Das, the level of knowing. Then the Rebbe brings his father's explanation, which illuminates the Zohar's details. According to his father, Reb Levin, to perceive the ways of the king refers to the lower level of Das. That is how the king reveals himself through his six attributes, which co correspond to the six direction, uh, directions of the world. Six attributes being kindness and strength, beauty or mercy, victory, splendor, foundation and kingship. And that's called the lower das, how Hashem comes down and bonds himself to the world. And that's to perceive the ways of the king. That's the ways of the king, how he comes down to the world. And to know the precious beauty of the king refers to the higher level of das, because beauty is totally united with the one who possesses it. The higher level of Das is the bond to Hashem himself. The intention of the heart is the quality of Bina, understanding. Like it says, Eliyahu tells us on Friday afternoon, Bina is in the heart, Bina Libo. And above Bina is Chachma. And that refers to supernal wisdom. And the heart's desire is higher than wisdom and corresponds to desire, which is the outer level of the king's crown. While perfection indicates the level of supernal enjoyment, the inner level of the crown, called the Holy Ancient One, Atik And the godly king who's being connected, and all these levels are called forth and united by the listener by the person with, united with the listener by the person of perfection, who tru truly knows he's bonded with his dot to the sound of the chauffeur. We want Mashiach now. Maybe the boys have a niggin for us. Yeah, we have a niggin. Let's hear. Yeah, let's see. I want to say hi to all of our friends. Over there, a happy new year to everybody. Good to be with you. Omek, Kadisin, watching. You know, you know who friends. came back? Uh, the clarinet player, our friend. Oh, is Danny watching? Danny. Okay, he's watching. He, he Danny. was last time. He left the love for Oh, good. I, it's good to see Danny all the time. Hopefully, he'll join us in Poison. He can play with us, too. I wish. Yeah. Okay. Danny, come here. Oh, wait just a second. Danny, all you want to
This was a rolling rock. Only, only a gazette tapes to. Like a, like a rolling stone, this one. Like a rolling wave. A rolling wave. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, fine. Listen, uh, Gimel Ella. Last time we explained about the depth, width, and length of Hoffa Dinanda. Yeah. And I think you were here. I, I was there, you know. Can you tell it to us? Well, I, I can explain yeah. it to us. Well, I think we should put it for everybody. Should yeah, be now to put see it, it on the screen for everybody. Hey, let me see. Hey, hey, make me the button. Make the, this one. Uh, oh, uh, the green, the green oh, button. Oh, there is a green button. Now you click on that. Uh, I'll click over here. Make a share. Oh, oh. Say. oh. No, okay. Ahem, ahem. Now, my dear friends, that's not written there, my dear friends. I just added it in myself. No, you're saying it in your words. Yes. Now, my dear friends, it is time to understand how each of these three levels, what's the three levels, if you remember, Chachma, Bina, and Das. Right? So we had these three levels. The Chachma was the flash of the intuition, how it comes into the mind. And the Bina was how it spreads into letters, how it turns into an explanation. And the Das is the focus on each of those things so that it connects good. So each one of these things has three dimensions in itself. One thing is it has a depth, which is a castle, a crown, right? So in other words, there's a depth of Chachma, a, a depth of Bina, and a depth of Das. And hell straight, you don't want to miss a void. This is good stuff here. This is, this is the glue that holds the whole world together. You don't want to miss it. So the second thing is width. Right? There's a width, which is Chochma, of Chochma, Bina, and Das. In other words, the Chochma of Chochma, within Chochma is a, is a Chochma, within Bina is a Chochma, within Das is a Chochma, right? This is the width called the width of the Chochma, the width of the Bina, of the width of the Mordechai, you answer, of the Das, good boy. <laughs> okay. Now, if I think it has its length, Right, so there's a length of Chachma, a length of Bina, a length of Das, which also equates with Bina, that there's a Bina within the Bina, a Bina within the Chachma, a Bina within the Das. So each one has its own three depth of width and length. So what's the depth? The depth has nothing on its own. Its only thing it does is it connects one thing with another thing, but it is itself doesn't really exist. So now we give an example because we want something easy to understand that's like this. So, for example, because after all, if it has a name, that yeah, so it must exist. It must be, or it must be something, because otherwise, what are you, what you calling something? Yeah. It's like if I say, "Oh, we have a schmingle bundle," and you say, "What is a schmingle bundle?" I say, "I don't know. It doesn't exist." And then no, say, but it's and then the will name. say, first of all, yeah. <laughs> So, anyways, yeah. So it has to be something, even if it's not a physical thing. It has to be something. So a wall, a wall has a corner, right? And the corner is a right angle. And the two sides of the wall, one runs to the east, one runs to the south. And any time you measure any part of the wall, it is either part of the south wall or part of the east wall. The point is the point right in the middle of the two. So where this last molecule from the east wall ends, and in between that and where the last molecule from the south wall ends is called the cone. But there's no molecules there. It's between the molecules. It doesn't exist. And that's the depth, the corner. Yeah, and that's the corner. So the, it, it is called, this the, it's the point that connects this wall with that wall. So since it cannot be measured and it doesn't exist as a separate tangible and the measurable zah, but it does have a certain existence. How does it have an existence? Because if you want to tell the boy's misbehaving, you tell him go to the corner. <laughs> and the boy wants to be a wants to be a, 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 a wants to be a smiley pants will say, but the uh, Rebbe, it doesn't exist. Ah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so the same thing is not just with a, with a, with a, a physical thing, but we can have also in an intellectual thing, you could have something like a corner which connects one thing to another thing. Right, so just like with the cone, it connects. It could also be in a in a in an intellectual thing, 
there can also be such a thing. For example, we said before we have a Chachman Rav and Abina. So what's in what's how does it connect to each other? In between the Chachman and the Bina is a Kesed, is a depth. Kesed of Bina connects the Chachman to the Bina and the Bina to the Chachman. Right? It's just a connection. It's a nothing. Right? And this is called the depth of Bina, which connects it, it to the Chachma. And for example, also, you will have a, the, what connects the Chachma to above the Chachma and all these different places where there's a connection, the Ola Keser, which is on depth. And one more example now is the Tevailite. For example, in other words, when you have the midnight, the proper midnight, right, the, the, meaning the point in between day and night, which doesn't mean the, in this case anyway. We don't really mean on a clock. Twilight time. Don't right? We don't midnight. mean on a clock. We mean on to call the Jewish law. There's a, a point that's between day and night. This point is called twilight, and it's nothing. It doesn't exist really because any second or part, 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 tiny little part of time before that is it is day, and after that is is is, is, is uh, night. So what's in between twilight? If it's nothing, it doesn't exist. Same thing like a coin. So there's no, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have a, it, yeah, but it doesn't have a measurement in time. Yeah. Every day it's a different time. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, one second. One second, I'm catching a mouse. Okay, here we go. Oh, good, okay. This hmm? doesn't have a specific question for you. They ask now, Lee. We might be at a different time every night, but it still happens in the same course of time. But it's, it's not, a, it's not measurable as day or night. It, That's it doesn't have a time measurement. It actually isn't like a minute or a second that is twilight. It is merely, it is a point in between two times rather than while it's happening. Itself. It's happening during time. But it doesn't so actually happen. Right. But there is a day and there's a night. And this is the immeasurable connection between day and night. There is no time. There's a connection between day and night. It's either day or night. The wall is either south or west. There's this point where they're connected, which is not measurable. Now, Leib, I know, I know in certain places they, you know, you know, especially when we're younger, we like to have a time that's called almost Shabbos. But <laughs> but really, you know how it's like by Shabbos, right? It's not Shabbos. And then all of a sudden it's Shabbos. There's no like in-between thing that's like there's a vein. Like, well, but that's actually the vein is very important to it, it, yes, but that time but that time doesn't that exist. Is, but we deny it to exist. Only right. only right. people right. higher than existence can tap right. into this thing. Yeah. 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 The but there is so in other words, that's deep. Wow, that's deep. <laughs> that's very deep. Anyways, okay, I'm not talking about that muscle anymore. <laughs> I, I I now realize that when amongst the company of Mishugners, we should not use this much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a more spiritual example of depth is a teacher teaches something to the student. And the teacher has to make a nothing. What does it mean he has to make a nothing? Because a teacher knows so much that if you will give everything he knows and give all this stuff, you will give it to the student, it will be too much to, for the student. The student cannot handle this. Right? So, what does he do? He has to remove all of his thoughts, all of his great deep thoughts. And he has to just only bring the simple little thoughts that is, will make sense for the student. Like, for example, if Reb Einstein, right, Reb Einstein wrote, wrote Flag and Zion, a, a first grade Rebbe. So what would he have to do? He can't, he can't, oh, it is a E, it is a M, it is a C, it is a Doha square, it's something the kid, the kid weighs nicht was based on E, you must make a, 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 a cycle, you know, a square, he weighs nicht, not know any of this stuff. So you have to just, uh, hey, kid, come here. He'll start lollipop, the kid's like, yeah. And then he says, oh, well, what if I have this lollipop and this lollipop? Now, how many lollipops is this? Now, you would think Einstein would say, hey, now wait a minute. Why am I sitting here with two lollipops like a, like a, like a little uh, sugar nail, uh, with this kid? I'm Einstein. I should be teaching him about that, uh, why this submarine is relative to a tree in, in Africa, in Indonesia, something. That's a great impression. 
That's exactly the way Einstein was yeah. taught. <laughs> so, but instead, no, Einstein has to say, wait, I'm teaching this child. And I have to put my Einsteinness away for a minute. And I have to just a real simple decorate. That's a real void, by the way. Simple decorate. I know because I just made it up. Anyways, so he has to nullify himself. Null is great, Mr. to teach the student. On the other hand, the student also has to have a nothing mind. Because the student, if he's going to listen to this Alter Kaki Einstein, <laughs> make his hair sticking out like a move on his head, like a Michelle with his giant mustache and talking all this Michelle gas and writing on the chalkboard like this. <laughs> like the child actually that's pretty exciting for children. But if he wants to, he has to also put himself aside because the child is thinking about a slide, about the, what do children nowadays think about, the, about a dreidel this time, yeah, a dreidel, an electric dreidel, yeah. <laughs> Thinking about the electric dreidel with light bulbs, and he says, Wait, no, I want to listen to this man and what he has to teach me. So, this child needs to put also himself, the student also has to nullify himself and put himself aside and focus all of his attention on the teacher. Called the depth of the student. Yeah, this is the depth of the student. That's from down to up, and from up to down is the depth of the teacher, which is that he has to put aside his knowledge. Am I making sense a little bit? Sour, little? You're good, you're, doing okay. Okay, good. You're right on. Good, very good. Let's continue. <laughs> and just, <laughs> just like there is, so each one has a nothing that they empty themselves to give over or receive from the other. Um, so now, wait, I think I said all this already. Self novocation, yeah, I just said already. Yeah, we said I this. think there's just one thing we're leaving out that what? the main depth, the main connector is the student connecting to the teacher. Yeah. Because when the student connects to the teacher and he opens his mind and empties his mind to be able to receive from the teacher, that's the depth of the student. And that's the whole uh, intention of the teacher is that the student should get it. So the main depth is the depth of the student. So wait, the main depth is the student? Yeah, once a student opens up and says, teacher what? What yeah. do you have for me? Then the teacher could teach. So the In main other words, depth, without that, there's no point of the teacher doing any of it. Yeah. He, he could, there's nothing. No, there's, no, nobody, there's nobody to talk to. Right, the whole thing of the teacher, he wants to give to the student. And how does that accomplish? Through the depth of the student. When the yeah. student empties himself to be able to receive the teacher. Okay, that makes sense. So that's the main, so that's kind of like how it is down here, that like, in other words, when we make ourselves nothing to, to, to God Almighty, yeah. then it awakens him to want to give, to, to want to take all of his godly light and make it so that it doesn't blow us up and stuff and just makes a nice world over here for Correct. us to do mitzvahs in. Hey, how about a nigin? Oh, what a great idea. <laughs> Come on, boys. You're, you're Malala if you're a genius. Yeah, by, and, and all by accident, too. That's the most amazing part.
Okay, so now the picture this was like this nigger and I like it. It was also this is a nigger, as we're saying on Rosh Hashanah. It's actually a coffee nigger from Sim Tatsaira. And we sing it from Rosh Hashanah also. Uh, okay, so uh, you see, so here is my thing which is this. Shem. We're up to the to the depth of Chafna now. After we explain depth, now we're yeah. gonna explain the depth of Chafna. Right. Um, okay, and so generation So we can understand this whole thing by understanding the depth of the Chachma. Even though the Chachma is the is the level of a mashpia one who gives uh, when it's uh, compared to Bina, right? Because in Chachma is the intuitive flash of the whole thing in the mind, and being is just the explanation, which is an enclosement. Nevertheless, it is the level of the receiver from higher than itself. Chachma receives from higher than Chachma. Higher than Chachma. Yeah. So Chachma now, in our metaphor, will be like the student. Ah, in other words, he's the receiver. teacher of Bina, but he's the student of his own teacher. Right, correct. Aha. Aha! <laughs> so, um, yeah, and so even so, so in this level that Chachma receives from is called maskil. That this is the power to have Chachma, right? Called the Kayacha maskil, the power the generator of Chachma. The Chachma generator. So this is the source. This is the the, the higher than Chachma. That Chachma is like a student too. Right, and it is it's where it is in the physical kanudlach over here in your brain. Is it's in the moisture that is hidden in the brains of the brains, which is located higher than the covering, which covers the brains of chacham bin das. In other words, it's like a mem- there's like a membrane, and this is on top of the membrane. This is a, 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 a moisture, and this covers the brain. Where the Chokhmah, the Bina, and the Das are, the Chokhmah being in the right way, the Bina being in the left way, and the Das is in the back. So these three brains, as we said, it's covered by memory. Yeah, and this is where the Kaycha cover is. over those three brains. Yeah, and this is where the Kaycha mask is. And yeah. higher than that covering, there's moisture. Yeah. And in that moisture is located the so the right brain, the Chachma brain, is the vessel that is able to receive the Chachma, the flow of wisdom from this wisdom generator, the Kayacha Master. The flow of the intellect generated by the spiritual source which produces Chachma. So how does it come into the brain? It flashes into the right brain like we know that in Chachma, which is sitting in the right brain, is where we have the flash of the, of the Chachma, of the, of the, the idea, idea of the idea flashes place. into yeah. the brain. And where does it come from? From the call Hamaskil. Hamaskil. Generates yeah. that flash in the brain. Ah, and there is a hint to this. Because in Hashem's name, there is the first letter is a Yud. And this Yud represents the Chachma, the Ebishter's Chachma, God Almighty's Chachma. And on the top of the Yud, on top of the Yud, there is a little, uh, um, ah, first of all, the Yud itself represents Chachma because it's little and it's like a little flash, right? It's a little flash. But on top of that, there's a little tiny stone, a little pokey thing. And this pokey thing goes on, it comes from on top of it, shows that it's receiving from the Kayacha Maskil on top of it. So, anyways, um, the, uh, before the idea comes into the Chachma, it is still included in the Kayacha Maskil, and it's called when it's there, it's called Pele or Aleph. It's not called Yud yet. Only when it becomes a Chachma, it's called Yud already, right? And this flow of seichel is also like an example of a teacher and a student. That in order to accomplish this flash to go into the chokhmah from the chokhmah generator, it first, the chokhmah generator can produce any kind of chokhmah at all. 
it can produce an infinite amount of chokhmas. But the problem is, when you have a problem and you at, at your hand, resulting in, when you have a problem right in front of you, <laughs> at the, hand, uh, not at your hand, just at, oh, hand. at hand. When we are straight, when we are a problem at hand, then you don't want just any kind of chachma. You want a specific chachma that has something to do with what you're doing. So then the, the Kayacha mask, or this generator of chachma, has to pull back and only produce the kind of chachma that you're looking for that has something to do with something. Right? Just like the teacher, he has to pull back all of his knowledge. And remember, he just needs to teach one plus one is two right now. Right? But the Kayacha mask can do infinite chachmas. And therefore, in order to produce just this chachma, um, it, it has to it has to pull back. Another example of this is the power of movement. You know, you know your hand. If you want to like get a, a, a cup of something, you put your hand and you get the cup and you drink it, right? And then you have to move with a certain amount of weight. Well, if you will take your infinite power of movement and try to apply that to the cup, I guarantee you, I lost a few shakes that way. You know, because you go to the cup and like. Okay, I'm going to drink with my infinite power movement. <laughs> it doesn't work. Lake, don't diet. It doesn't work. You have to limit. You have to limit the movement and only do a specific kind of movement, right? So it's the same thing that the teacher has to take away all of the infinite knowledge, especially the Kaita Maslow, which is infinitely knowledgeable. You have to do only this specific Kafna, put it into this specific Kafna, right? So there needs to be a contraction, an emptying of the vessel of the brain. Well, just like we said before by Einstein, we have to get rid of all this great amounts of chachma and only give uh, and, 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 and and only give what the chachma, the flash of the chachma that's needed. Right now, on the other hand, the chachma also has to be empty and ready for this flash. Because if the chachma is already occupied, you mean the chachma brain? Has the to be brain, yeah. Because if the chachma brain. Is, is, is occupied with a different chachma, it can't get this chachma, right? Just like, for example, we have a cup of water, when you want to drink juice without first drinking the water or pouring it out or whatever you want to do with it, but you have to have an empty cup so you can put the juice in it. If there's no space in the cup, the juice get all over the floor. And we don't want the chachma from the Kecha Maskil all over the floor. <laughs> So, therefore, the uh, same thing is the chokhmah has to be focused on the receiving this case. A masculine also has to empty itself. So it also has to have a nothing. It has to be nothing in order to get from the case of Right? So just like we know, for example, let's talk a little bit about how this works in the world of Atsilus, the godly level of Atsilus. That we know in Atsilus, the, the chokhmah in Atsilus, right, is absolutely nullified. It's absolute, uh, absolutely like a nothing. And it has to be like a nothing because it has to be totally empty in order to receive the, the infinite light from God Almighty that is higher than it. Because if it will, by the way, by empty, it means also like, for example, we have an angel. Like, I have an angel is a very high sort of being. But an angel has a, a certain feeling of mitzvah. He has a certain feeling of, of I am some sort of existence. And as long as he have this kind of feeling of I am some sort of existence, he cannot fully... Uh, 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 become a vessel for the pure, unadulterated, godly light of higher than Atsilus from the infinite light. So Chochmah is a nothing. It doesn't feel itself to have any, any Metzius at all. It doesn't feel itself to have anything, any, any uh, existence. And therefore, it is able to be a vessel to receive from God's infinite light. Right? And this emptying of the mind to receive the wisdom, or to receive the Chochmah to receive in the, in the in, in from the from the infinite light into from the core it's called depth omek i don't know how omek keeps working himself into our uh, his uh he's, he's the, the the main character or something here omek 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 anyways it is not an actual wisdom yet right this depth because it's before the flashing it just it just gets it ready for the flashing it's before a connection the yeah so it's a connection that allows for the chachma flash to happen but it's not yet an actual Chagma flash. So this is why it's that. It's actually a, a nothing. It's like a double nothing. It's a nothing in between the nothing. 
Because Chochmah itself is like a nothing, you know? Yeah, but what he means right now is that the Chochmah brain empties itself to be able to receive. And emptying is not a Chochmah. That's not it's always, that's an act of the, of the Chachma, But this is before it's received. So this is the depth but of the But the only Chachma way it could be received is through this depth of wisdom. By opening itself and making a rest. Correct. Okay, good. So we see there's two levels. There is the Mashpi and the Mechabal. Each the giver and the receiver both have to nullify themselves. So the giver is the metaphor for the koach amaskil, yeah, and the receiver is the metaphor for the chachma brain, right? Or, or in the case of the atzilus, the the giver is the infinite light of God right. Almighty. You, you would say but yeah. what, what's being given is the infinite light. Yeah, and this goes to the chachma is the receiver, the atzilus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we hold down here. Oh. Um, oh, so we can understand it to using understanding a the chokhmah, the idea of a chokhmah, we can understand from using the idea of a spring water in the ground. A spring of water. A spring of water in the ground. Yeah. Um, that a spring has two levels. One of them you can see outside, and one is inside the oit. Inside the oit lane. And the other is outside the oit. So the second, the level where it's one level where it's hidden, the oit. Yeah. One level where it's hidden, it's flowing through the veins and the oit in a hidden stream. Right? And this, which is, is the inclusion of the spring in its source, which is called the deep. Right? It's like, like an aquifer, the original source of the underground spring, which is so deep in the oit and is the source of many springs and wells. Because you know, one aquifer can have a lot from the oit, <laughs> can have lots of springs and, uh, and wells coming out of it. And the flow of tunnels carries. So, wait, the so let's stop. That aquifer yeah. the, is a metaphor of a metaphor of the teacher, which itself is a metaphor for the Koach That's a lot of metaphors. Right. So this metaphor of the aquifer is similar to the teacher. It's the one who gives. Yeah. And it's similar to the Koach the one that generates the Koach. Okay. And what will be the actual Chachma? But it How the spring flashes out, out, out the of the ground. Pops out, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just like the Chachma flashes into the brain. Correct. So this flashes into the revelation of the light, of the top of the light. Okay. So um, we know that whichever one is deeper in the light, right, this, the flow of water is faster and stronger, and it is livelier water and purer water, just like when you have soda that you drink from a mitastra. If this straw you put deep into the cup, then it, then it will flow clear and strong. Right? So the Chochmah also writes this way as two levels. There is the way it's revealed in the brain, just like the spark that flashes in. Or the bubbling the up out of the ground. out from the ground when the, when the spring becomes revealed on the top of the oil. Oh, you have the inclusion. The second level is when it's in, still included in the souls, meaning like when the water is underground, or when the uh, the koya, the chachma is still inside of the chachma generator. So that's the second level, and uh, it's so this is the this what's it called the bitzalim that it is in a level called the hidden souls of the spring of chachma. And it comes out, how does it come out through your gear, through effort, right? How is it that uh, that Chachma comes into the brain by putting in the effort to empty the mind to yeah. be able to receive? So What's the that effort that it brings in. Yeah, and it might be that in this thing with the water flowing up, there might be some kind of a vacuum that pulls it up. Ah, I'm so not this sure is like similar to this, uh, whatever up. the mechanics are that make this happen, 
is the similar thing like Yagiya, that's the effort that causes it. Like it says come. in Perkiava. Well, it's pressure. What of pressure? You have pressure that takes the money back. Like it says in Perkiava. Yagaiti, I did the Yagiya. Yeah. Or Masasi, and I found the Chachma. Believe me. Yeah, it's like, uh, what was it? Nocher, Abraham's brother said. Remember, he said this. Under pressure, under pressure. I know you get kapecha. Oh, you get yeah, you get kapecha. So, uh, like, you have you have salt? Is there salt over there? Uh, there's no salt serving. What we finished both of them? Oh, um, I brought two. Maybe there's another. Okay, yeah, under the table. Maybe give me one of these salts. Medav, 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 vetten de vissel stickel. Can I roll it to you? Yeah. Uh, yes. Late, oh, late. Look how long my feet are. <laughs> oh, the four inches. How do you think this is gonna work? Yeah. How do you think it's gonna work, late? My, 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 my feet is four inches long. <laughs> okay. So, the, in the teacher and the student, we have the same thing. The teacher nullifies his own. Great level of intellect and order to teach the student. And the student in time nullifies himself by entering his mind in order to see the teacher. And this is the same thing. In other words, if I'm understanding this right, with Sally, yeah. if I'm understanding this right, so the nullification of the teacher is like the hidden part of the spring. The, the nullification of the teacher is the metaphor. For how the Koha masculine nullifies itself to produce a particular ah. hub. See, each metaphor illustrates a different point. Okay. So the, the teacher and the nullification of the teacher illustrates how the Koha masculine has to hold itself back and contract itself in order to generate a particular idea. So that's why we need yeah. all these different now, allegories. The, the metaphor, they're, not, they're not just uh, redundant. They each teach us something. The meta, right. The metaphor of the flow of water into the spring contains a very deep thing that in the creation of the world, you need both of these metaphors. That like a lightning flash, when it comes out, cannot be separate from its source. That's why it goes back right away to be included back in its source. I might flash and go back. So, so too, the letters of creation of Hashem, how he creates the world. The world cannot be separate from Hashem. So that revelation has to go back and be included in Hashem because it can't be separate. So, so what that's happens? why Hashem keeps making the world every so second. Can, that's why, so he keeps having to say those letters of creation because they keep going back and being included. And that's like the thing in the lightning flash. But the difference is that in the lightning flash, there's a new lightning that's produced. And in the creation of the world, it's the same world that comes out every time. So that's why you need the metaphor of the spring, because the spring is one drop of water after the other. And that's why you need the lightning flash to show that it has to go back to its source every time. It's not just a, a, a flow that happens automatically. So that's the depth of having those two metaphors. Why we need both of those. Lane, how about some kind of a negative? So, so far we did the depth of Hoffman. We didn't yeah. get to the width of Hoffman, which is the flash of the Hoffman that comes into the brain. It is. Ta 
You accepted Hashem as our king. So, my dear friends, I'm going to tell you very short. Now we have coming up in Kippur. We have coming up Sukkot is in Rastayr. We have these times now is coming. Hashem, God Almighty, is coming down with his very, with his, with his essential light down to sit with us, to dance with us, to, to, to fabrain with us. Go, go, go to the way. Go find a shul near you. There's a Chabad house near you somewhere. You know what's beautiful about Simvastere in Kippur, Simvastere? You don't have to say no words. You don't have to do nothing. Water. When you are in, when you are in, the, the, when you're going to the show to go see God, you're he going works. to see him. You're going to see him and, and he likes to see you. He doesn't care what you say, what you don't say. And go, you're wearing pants or not. Yeah, you're wearing pants and not wearing pants. You go to Chabad.org, C-H-A-B-A-D dot O-R-G. Find the Chabad house near you. They're very welcoming places. They accept everybody. Come, come connect with God Almighty and uh, join all of us, uh, join all, 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 of the, all of the people serving God Almighty. And dancing with him. And dancing with him. And so we'll him until he comes and dancing with us. And uh, everybody a good, sweet, happy, healthy new year. May this be, it be this year. The following even in Kippur, the following even in Rastere, the third base of Mikdash in, in, in our holy city, Jerusalem, now with Moshiach, it came right away. So uh, I just got an idea. Yeah. You know, we, we say every day now, Avinu uh, Malkeno um, means our father, our king. Yeah. So I want to sing the Gazinta Hay Street version. Of Avinu Makenu. Oh, Tati Arki, why don't you do a good thing and please return with your people? And the angels all sing, Oh, glorious King, won't you please return with your people? They made you a crown. Won't you come back to that? And please return with your people. Oh, Tatiya, you know it don't mean nothing unless you please return with your people. Do we sign off now?